Hopefully everybody can hear me. It's Pip here from QueenPipCards.com here live on my video, um, on my page rather, on my video, doing a video on my page. Welcome to the new year. <laughs> it is 2019 and this is my first uh, brand new basics of the year. It is brand new basics episode four in which we are talking about adding dimension to your projects so we started off we've done a couple of we've done three videos so far in the series and i've been sharing how to do initial stamping and all that um, uh, jazz with watercolors and uh, the difference between the different ink pads so we've done stamping ink pads basic tools that you need for your kit etc and now we're talking about adding some dimension to your projects so if you've joined and you can hear me and everything's okay please send me a thumbs up um and if you can't hear me please put a comment in so that i know that you can't hear me because that would be good to know today i'm going to be using the happy, happy tales um stamp set from Stamping Up. This is out of the new spring summer catalogue. And I love dogs. So this was a brilliant stamp set for me. I have loads of friends who have dogs. Uh, they seem to be getting more dogs by the minute. So, <laughs> so this is going to be a well-used stamp set by the time it um, it comes to an end, whenever that may be. But I think it's really cute. And I think the best thing is that you can get a punch to go with it. So I'm going to turn it over so you can see. So you get a punch that stamps out the dog image and a little heart which matches this little heart that's here as well so um it's a great set for a beginner especially if you have uh, friends who like dogs there is another stamp set however if you have friends that like that like cats instead and this card could be completely adjusted uh, i don't actually have the stamp set myself but it's in the catalogue which i can now show you um it's called nine lives and again you've got different um images for cats and some bits and pieces and you can get the cat punch which is in our annual catalogue so you can get those two or you can get these two which is um what i'm using today so moving on let's talk about basics and how to add dimension to your cards so one layer cards are great i've shown you some of those before um i have in fact, I've got a couple. Where did I put my last one? I've shown you some where it's literally just stamping straight onto a piece of paper, folding it in half, and off you go. And that's great to start off with. Everybody likes that. Um, it's really quick and simple, and you can get cards off and in, uh, out into the post and off to your friends really quickly. But if you want to move it up a step and add some dimension, different colours, etc., then you're going to need to start talking about layering so oh hi linda hi jay and ginny's given me a thumbs up so that's good hello hello everybody who's there uh let me know how everything is going and looking so this is the card that i made with this stamp set that we're going to talk about today and i'm going to sh walk you through the different uh areas of dimension that's on this card so first of all you can see it's a card base there's just a plain card base there okay we've talked about that before uh and then i've put a whisper white card piece of card on top like that then i've added some paper and then i've added some ribbon this ribbon is just gorgeous it comes in lots of different colors uh, so you can go with whichever color you fancy you don't have to have an orange card like i have you could have a green yellow purple or blue one but i've gone for orange today just because that happened to be what I was decided to make so and then I've added some ribbon all right and then from, for some extra dimension I've added the dog you can see that the dog is is up on what we call stamping dimensionals so these I talked about in our basics tools the different ad, um, adhesives you would need stamping dimensionals are what gives you the dimension of the dog being higher than the card base and then i put a little heart on here now what you don't know is that this card bless it has been through the wars i accidentally after i made it turned it upside down on top of my ink pad so there's a little bit just left here by the tail and there's a tiny tiny amount on the ribbon but i had to re-stick the dog down and re-stick the heart down with another one straight on top of it because they'd gone rather dark 
<laughs> but that's the great thing about dimension. You can cover up a lot of mistakes. So <laughs> that's what we're going to make today. Oh, hi, Easel. Nice to see you. I never get your name pronunciation right, but I hope it Easel is about right. So <laughs> it's lovely to see you, honey. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. And I've made a similar card for welcoming my new teamies into my team. Uh, because we have a great joining offer at the minute. So uh, this was from a stamp set that's a demo only stamp set. Uh, and it just says, welcome to the team. And then making dreams come true up here. And again, it's got that ribbon. So it's the same layout. So I'm kind of trying to show you that you can, you can do different cards with the same layout and have a bit of dimension. And it just helps um, to just keep things going. <laughs> yeah, lots of laughters and hearts at that point. Yeah, you've just got to the bit where it says I made a complete boo-boo. And let's try not to do that today, shall we? That's the plan anyway, but who knows? I've done it once, I could do it again. So the first thing you need to know is how to cut your layers, okay? So for those of us who are in Europe, and I'm sorry, Ginny, that this does not match your cardstock, but for the rest of us who are in Europe, you cut your card base in half, so you get a piece of A4, and you just chop it down here at 10.5 centimetres, and then you score it at 14.8 14.9 centimetres, and that gives you a card base that opens like that. What I call my upsy downsy card, or uh, up, upsy card, but really it's a tenth fold apparently, so we'll call it a tenth fold because it's probably easy. Standy uppy card, that's what I call it. Um, then you need to cut, cut this piece of cardstock, which is Whisper White, and that piece just has this little border all the way around it. So that piece is 10 centimetres, because your card base was 10 and a half, so this is 10 centimetres, and this is 14.4 centimetres. So you're basically just going down half a centimetre at a time. Does that make sense? Uh, and that gives you that, that little border. And then this piece comes from our gingham card pack, paper pack, which I've completely lost. I've moved it so that I had room to, to do the video. But it's two-sided, and it comes basically in all of these colours that match this ribbon. So you have blue, you have purple, you have um, yellow, green, and you have this orange. Okay, so you have all those colours, and they all come in six by six squares. And the paper is two-sided, so you have this nice small check on one side and a larger check on the other. And it looks good either way. Uh, I prefer the small check with the dog just because the dog is a smaller image. But you can do either. It doesn't really make any difference. It's just personal preference. Now, because these come in packs of six by six, I just cut it in half at three inches. Okay. And then I turned it round and I cut it at 10 centimetres, so it's the same size as the paper. That's my little cheat for the day. Now, to add the dimension, you're going to want to layer these two together. And I actually did layer these two together before I did my stamping, which normally I wouldn't do, but I like you, you want to see where this line is before you stamp up here, so you know what you're um, lining up to. Hey, Sandra's joined us. Welcome, Sandra. It is nice to see you on this grey day here in Ashvale. It's very grey, <laughs> but never mind. So I'm using my multi-purpose glue, and I'm just, you know, one of my other essential basics, and I'm just going to glue that down to this cardstock, because that means that I have that line. I know where now I should be. Oh, get it straight, Pip. I know where I have to stamp to. That's a good thing about the multi-purpose glue. You have some, what I call, wiggle room. Okay, so that's going to go on top there. So now we need to do the stamping. And as I say, we're using the Happy Tail stamp set. And in here, you have the basic dog outline. Oh, this is going to be noisy. Sorry. I'm just going to get rid of that straight off. That's easy. Let's do that. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to take the dog off because we're going to need the dog. We need this sentiment here, which says a best friend leaves paw prints on your heart, which they do, whether it's of a dog variety or another variety. And we're going to need the paw, and then we're going to need this funny looking piece that looks like this. Okay, 
and I'll tell you why we need that in a moment. So that's what we need out of there. And that was me just dropping the stamps on the floor. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good job, I don't need any more out of that. Right, let's put uh, let's put these on some blocks. So I'll pop that one on there. And then we'll put this one on here. Will it fit? Just about. There we go. And then we need a bigger one for the actual dog. So I'll put that there and there. Around that way. Honestly, you can tell I've been crafting all weekend. These need a good clean. I'll get my um, brake cleaner out soon. If anybody wants to know how you clean your blocks to make them look nice and also get a much better um, attachment for your stamps, uh, I always use brake cleaner. Just the normal motorcycle brake cleaner. Um, my husband had some. And I said, oh, I've got to get the glue off these scissors. And he said, oh, just use some brake cleaner. I looked at him rather strangely, but um, it works a treat. So there, I now have commandeered his, his brake cleaner. It's now mine. OK, so we're going to just stamp the sentiment. And of course, I need my foam pad because we're doing photopolymer. OK, so. Let's, you just ink that up, make sure that you get a good coverage, make sure you can see it, and then you're going to use the line of your um, paper here to just help line that up. And I'm going to use my camera and hope that it is kind of straight. There we go. Oh, it's a bit wonky, but it's not too bad. Actually, it looks better in real life than it does on the camera. So... <laughs> So trust me on that one okay so that's there and then i'm going to add some paw prints this is soft suede ink that i'm using here and then this is crumb cake which i'm using in my in the old form ink pad i haven't got a new ink pad yet in that one and then i'm just going to pop some paw prints coming up the side here so that it's kind of attached to that and then we're going to add some ribbon and you can see that already you're adding dimension to the card just by adding these different elements to it and as you attach them you're basically building interest you're building texture and you're building um, just I guess a, a bit more of a wow I mean, a single layer card can absolutely be a wow, but I think people always like something that they can touch and feel and, um, you know, just, oh, it's different colours. It, it, it adds some different um, dimension, which is what we're talking about today. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's, a, it's wrong to say that adding a spot of dimension to a card can just give you that extra wow. And sometimes if you don't have a lot, you know, to make a real wow on a single layer card, you might need to add lots of different things, or you might have to do some colouring, or you might have to do something like that. Whereas just adding some paper and a bit of ribbon automatically gives you a bit more of a wow, I think, straight away. So the um, next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to attach your ribbon across the card here. This I'm using my snail, which again, we talked about before. And if you hold this up to the light, you can't, I can't see this. Can you see this on here? No. Uh, if I, <laughs> it's the wrong way around, simple as that. If I hold this up to the light, though, I can see where my paper join is. And then I can just attach my ribbon straight across there. So I know it's straight. I know it matches with the ribbon, uh, with the papers. And you've got a nice border that's clean and, and done. And then I'm going to attach that directly to my card base. Again, using my multi-purpose glue, straight over the ribbon. It doesn't matter. You can go straight down there, over that, and then across the centre. And then that we're going to pop straight onto this. OK. Make sure you've got your little border all the way around. There we go. Ah, Julie's on. Hi, Jules. How are you doing? Long time no speak. <laughs> I was just chatting with Julie just before we came on. <laughs> so there we go. That's that's that on there. 
so then we need to do the dog. Love the dog. And the dog, again, you're going to need both ink pads for. So I do the outline of the dog. I think this looks like a, I think they've done it really very cleverly, actually, at Stampin' Up, because actually I think this dog could be pretty much any dog. Maybe not a Dachshund. Maybe not like a Newfoundland or something like that. But a Labrador, a Retriever, a Spaniel, maybe even a Cockapoo. I think I might have done that a bit close, but we'll see. Um, I think it could be any dog, really, especially when you use the bits that they bring with it. So this funny looking thing <laughs> with the three um, splodges on it is for adding spots and splodges to your dog, basically. OK, so you line up your stamp. Just hovering over the three different make just make sure that you're you're over his eye, you're in with his bum, and you've got that down the front. There we go, not bad for on camera. And that's the three splotches, so you can have a spotty dog. Now I feel you need one in the middle. That's just a personal thing, but I think I think you do. So what I did was I went in just with the single one, like that, and I went in down here. Where did I go? In here. Because that made sure that both these splotches were off the dog. They're not gonna re-ink it. And I just went in again there. And look, see now he's got a fourth, fourth. And I know three is the magic number, but I think for a dog he needs four. That's just my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. So there you go. Okay, I'm sorry if you can hear some whizzing. Apparently my Norton is providing, is performing background tasks on my laptop while my computer is idle. It's not idle. I'm on Facebook. There we go. Never mind. Okay, so now we've got him stamped out. Now we're going to punch him. Not in a nasty way, obviously, just in a nice way, because we're just going to punch him out of the cardstock. So we're going to line up our dog with our punch. And you can see that you're going to get just a smidgy of a of a border round him, like that. Punch. There we go. And you get the dog and a heart at the same time. Cool, huh? Look at that, isn't he cute? So cute. Uh, but the thing I like about this is that they have come up with other things as well. So, oh, sorry, I just had to go and get the stamp set, which I dropped on the floor. So, <laughs> so if you remember, we've used these dots, but you could also just use him as he is, because that would be like a Labrador or a Retriever. I think the spots come in and you could make him more of a Spaniel. Uh, or what else has spots? Uh, don't know. I know lots of dogs. Some kind of some pointers have spots. I think. Then you've got these spots down here, and these spots are very specific. They make a Dalmatian. Look at that! Look. Oh, I can't believe it again. Somebody's at the door. Okay. I'm just you. Just I'm just going to ignore them. So. This makes a Dalmatian. And um, isn't he cute? So cute. So you've got Dalmatians, you've got Spaniels, you've got um, other spotty dogs, which I can't remember. You've got Labradors, you've got Retrievers, you've got all different kinds, all different sorts of dog. So you can make lots and lots of different ones. So the next thing you need is your stamping dimensionals, because you could stick them on flat. But as I said before, if you add a little bit more dimension, it just lifts it slightly. So I have two sets of dimensionals here. I have my normal standard size and my mini size. My mini size I'm going to use on my heart. And I'm just going to pop a little dimension right there. It fits perfectly into the heart. If you don't have nails, you can use your, your um, tool, obviously. And then I'm just going to pop the heart there like that on top of the ribbon. So now we've got like three or four layers coming up. And then the dog itself, I'm going to use my normal size dimensionals. And you know me, I don't like things sticking or hanging off. I put another little mini one just on his paw, just there like that. Okay, take those off. 
There we go. All righty. And then you just literally just pop him down like that. Ta -da! He's so cute. But see now you've got some stamping, you've got a bit of dimension with a little stamping dimensional, and you've got the dog going on. And that I think is a really cute card that you could send to any friend, someone who's a best friend, um, someone who has dogs, someone who's had a dog who maybe has lost their dog. I love the fact that the stamp set comes with um, So Sorry For Your Loss, which is just brilliant for anyone who's lost their dog. Um, I know some people who don't have dogs, they just don't get it. Um, when somebody loses a dog it's like losing part of your family so um that's always a good that's always a good thing to have so sorry for your loss i love this keep calm and wag on so <laughs> quite a lot of my friends could do with that as well at the moment just keep going it's all right this one says for just for you which is also cute and this says rough rough and you've got a paw which i love this helps me this is part of my logo Two hearts, a bone, a collar. I mean, you could, you've got and a house and a dog house. So I'm going to be making something with that, I have a feeling. So lots and lots of different options, but it's so easy to add some dimension to your cards. Um, as I say, here's another one I made with the, with the dog. And this one was literally just more layers of cardstock. I didn't even use any papers. It was just more layers of cardstock. And then the dog also layered up with dimensionals. And it just adds that feeling of texture. You touch it and you and you think, OK, that's a bit different. It's not flat like most cards are that, that people buy. So that's a very quick video. Brand new basics talking about adding dimension to your projects. Hope you've enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up and a like if you have. As always, I'm going to pop it over onto my YouTube channel so you can go back and watch it. And obviously it will keep on here um, too. Sometimes it's hard to find them again on, on Facebook. So I'll pop it over on my YouTube channel and then you can have a, have a go at making your own dog. Uh, and if you do want to have a go at making your own dog um, and repeating this card, then obviously you can now purchase these items from my online store. So I will, um, if you click the shop now button, on my Facebook page. Oh, thanks for all the hearts and the love, peeps. Uh, and just look for the Happy Tales bundle. You get the the stamps and the punch all included um, for twenty nine pound fifty, which is pretty cool. So if you add that, the papers are ten pounds twenty five, eleven pounds something like that. So if you add that on and some glue or dimensionals, because obviously we need dimensionals, uh, you get the you get the ribbon for free as part of celebration. So, uh, yeah, hop on over now and you could be making your own little dog cards for all of your friends. And if you don't want the dog, as I say, you could buy the cat version as well. So, you know, we cover all pets at Stampin' Up. <laughs> Alrighty. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.